is the Emergency Medical Minute. So I'm just going to take a moment to talk a little bit about a common uh, uh, presentation presentation that we see in the ER, which is vertiginous dizziness. Um, there are a lot of sort of clinical syndromes that manifest with that symptom, uh, and some of them tend to have confusing terms. So I wanted to come up with sort of a construct that would allow you to remember some of the uh, more common causes, specifically of peripheral vertigo. So uh, just uh, by way of uh, background, uh, when we see a patient with dizziness, uh, probably have all experienced uh, really nonspecific symptoms, and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So clinically, what we try and hone in on is whether or not that dizziness represents disequilibrium, where they feel unsteady, whether or not it feels like presyncope, which is that they're gonna nearly pass out, uh, or the third big category is vertigo. Uh, Vertera comes from Latin uh, to turn. Uh, ego is a condition, so it's a sensation of movement, either patient or environment, uh, which constitutes vertigo, okay? So as far as your differential diagnosis, uh, once you've sort of broken it down into vertiginous dizziness, as distinguished from disequilibrium and presyncope, uh, what you want to do is uh, sort of sufficiently consider and exclude central causes of vertigo, uh, and then uh, if it uh, uh, is a presumptive peripheral vertigo, make a diagnosis based on uh, the clinical syndrome. So that's going to be the main focus uh, of this little graph. Uh, but uh, as far as central causes of vertigo, so those are things that we see here often, right? TIA, stroke, uh, other intracranial uh, 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 conditions, like notably MS, uh, technically post-concussive syndrome, you could put in that category as well. Um, those generally have other so-called bulbar symptoms. Uh, have you ever heard of that term, bulbar? No. So those are brainstem. Uh, so, you know, it ends up that when it's a central cause, it, because uh, the brainstem has the vestibular nucleus, uh, then uh, there's generally other bulbar symptoms or brainstem symptoms uh, when there's a central cause. Uh, so things like double vision, difficulty uh, swallowing, uh, facial nerve uh, palsy. The other big category there are cerebellar uh, signs and symptoms. Uh, so that would be sort of ataxia with vertigo. So getting to uh, the peripheral causes, they tend to be actually more severe in terms of the uh, presentation sudden onset, significant nausea, vomiting, significant vertigo with the absence of bulbar symptoms or cerebellar symptoms. What are some of the things that you've seen diagnosed as peripheral causes of vertigo? So like inner ear. Mm -hmm. So inner ear, uh, that would be generally things like labyrinthitis. You can get that from just a normal otitis media. Uh, you can get it from sort of toxic causes. You can get it from a viral syndrome most commonly, so inner ear. What about sort of the classic, I turned over in bed uh, in the morning and then had sudden vertigo and then they come in and they don't want to move their head at all uh, because when they put their head in a certain position, they get a significant paroxysm of vertigo. So that's BPPV, the benign paroxysmal uh, positional vertigo. Um, another uh, big category is Meniere's disease. Uh, so that's sort of the classic episodic uh, vertigo uh, where the episodes typically last for minutes or hours and they tend to be recurrent over time. So I've had this several times over my life type of symptomatology, usually associated with earfulness. Uh, and then neuronitis is the other big category. So from uh, the uh, vestibular apparatus in the inner ear, the nerve that goes uh, to feed the brain centrally. So it's a lot of syndromes, so a good way to remember it is whether or not the symptoms are episodic or constant, or whether or not they're associated with hearing loss and tinnitus or not. So it ends up that, so, you know, under that category of episodic with hearing loss and tinnitus is Meniere's, uh, which is uh, sort of this, uh, uh, the symptoms you get for minutes or hours, they tend to be recurrent over time. They're associated with ear fullness. Uh, as far as constant, it would be something like labyrinthitis, uh, where 
patients come in and the vertigo is persistent regardless of typically exacerbated by head position but typically uh, constant uh, and it is associated generally uh, with um, hearing loss or tinnitus and then episodic with no hearing loss uh, or tinnitus and it's BPPV um, and then constant with uh, no hearing symptoms neuronitis. So hopefully that gives you a sense of sort of how we think about dizziness, what the differential diagnosis is, and specifically the clinical syndromes that are associated with peripheral vertigo. Okay? All right. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.